Hi everybody, it's Lisa and just ready for this class. It's going to be a reading class and I just put the link up in the Verbling chat. So if you want to click on that, it's, a, it's in a Google document so I can make the font bigger and everything. It comes from Time Magazine and um, everybody can go ahead and come on in. Just click the come on in button and you will come into uh, this uh, Google uh, Hangouts. Hi there. Yair, how are you? Good. You're good? All right. <laughs> you look uh, relaxed. Okay. So um, everybody who wants to uh, come into the class, you can. And we're going to be reading an article. Um, it's about colleges in the United States and what's happening with students. So. Um, even though it's about the United States, it might be interesting and it might be relevant to your own, um, what's happening in your own country as well. So um, we're going to read that together. And the way that we do the reading class is that I read a paragraph and then you read the same paragraph. And that way everybody gets a chance to hear me speak and listen to the way that I read the words um, for the proper pronunciation and then you get a chance to read too. So you can practice your reading skills and your own uh, pronunciation of the words and also probably going to learn some new vocabulary um, in this context. So um, it's a good way to learn vocabulary. Um, I'm not really a big fan of trying to learn vocabulary just with long lists, a thousand words at a time or something, but rather just to build your understanding of new words by reading and listening and reading and listening. So hi, uh, Julia, how are you? Hi, good. Good. Uh, where are you from? I'm from Italy. Hi, everybody. All right. Everybody's coming in. Yair, where are you from? Hello, I'm fine. <laughs> You're lying in bed. Yeah, I can see. What country are you from? Uh, I'm from Colombia, okay. the only country of South America that has two seas, two oceans. Yes, the, co the country that's very hot. <laughs> <laughs> that's what uh, my other Colombian friends say, it's very hot right now Oof, in Colombia. Yes. <laughs> okay, Tan, you're back, and Maria's back, and Ismael, and uh, Farhad, hi there. Yeah, hi teacher. How are how, you? How have you been? I'm, I've been I'm good. doing good. Okay, wonderful. I'm, good, and okay. I'm say hi to Blanca. How are you, Blanca? Hi, Lisa, I'm fine, thank you. Good. How are you? Pretty good. Batuhan, are you there? Maybe I didn't say your name right, or maybe your microphone is muted, oh. so there I'm you sorry. go. I'm sorry. So I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. How are okay. you? Good. And 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 Body's there. He's burning up also in Colombia. Oh, look at him. He's all in his hammock, chilling out. Yeah. <laughs> 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 How are you? Long look at time those. Of look at those two Colombians. They're just <laughs> both very relaxed and chilling out. Envious. Yes. Yes. You guys are chilling out. That's how you read that. <laughs> okay, cool. All right, we're going to do some reading. Um, was everybody able to open up the document? Let me see yeah. here. Okay, it looks like we have 13, 14 people. So if you are watching this, um, then you will be able to listen to us. We're, we're going to be reading and discussing this article. And um, hi, Tarsicio. I'm sorry you can't join. It is one of the bummers about this is that only nine people can come into the Google Hangout. So um, certain times of the day especially we have a lot of people who are very eager to uh, join the English classes and listen to English or speak English. And sometimes um, I don't really know how it works. I think it's kind of the luck of the draw who gets in. But I think this class was fully booked. So people were using their uh, premium uh, memberships. So 
if you guys are having trouble getting into some of the classes that you want for sure, you might want to consider getting some reservations. There's a couple of ways you can do that for free. Um, if you just click on the, the little link that says get reservations, it tells you how to get some uh, free reservations. And then after you try it, if you like it, you can pay $25 uh, per month. So it's not a bad price. It's uh, the price of one audiobook or maybe two paperback books for a whole month's worth of uh, classes in English and Spanish, too. All right, everybody. This um, article was taken from Time Magazine. Some of you who come to a lot of my classes, uh, we have read an article before by this same lady. Her name is Annie Murphy Paul, and she writes on topics of um, education and learning techniques and language learning and different things like that. She's an author. I think she's written at least one or two books, and that's kind of her areas, uh, her areas of interest. Her areas of interest are education, learning strategies, uh, learning second, third, fourth languages, and how to do that in a successful way. So I got this off of the Time Magazine website and put it up here so that we can read it together. I'm going to actually make it even bigger because I know that some people who are just watching it on uh, Verbling, it's easier to see when it's on the screen. So I'm going to start off reading. I think most people are familiar, but I will go over how we do this. I will highlight what I'm going to read, and then I'll read it. And then I will call on, uh, probably Badi will be the first one to read. And you will be reading what I just read. Okay, so the first time it, I'm reading it, just to kind of uh, let you guys listen, hear those words, uh, maybe some of the words are new for you, and so you'll hear me pronounce them, and then you'll start thinking about what they mean, okay? So the Teacher. title is, Does College Put Kids on a Party Pathway? Party Pathway. What does a party pathway mean? <laughs> That's the first question we got in the Verbling chat. Does anybody want to give a, give a guess at what that is? What do you think it means? Party pathway. Everybody knows what a party is, right? Yeah. Yes, yes. Yes, teacher, we know. Okay. Yes, you guys can speak up. Don't be shy. Party. So everybody knows what a party is. And what is a pathway? Teacher. A... Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. How are you doing? Good. I'm doing very well. Okay. How about you? What's a party pathway, Tan? Uh, it's a like a direction. I mean, yes, yes. So, is the the question is does college put kids on a party pathway? So it, it means um, are colleges preparing them for anything except parties? <laughs> so I don't know how it is in your country, but in the United States, it is very common for college students to party a lot. So a lot of times, even it starts in high school for a lot of teenagers in the United States, but it gets even more intense in college. So if you have Facebook friends who are in college, for example, you will often see pictures of them drinking, out at bars, out at restaurants, and they're just often um, having parties with their friends, meeting new people, things like that. So I'm, I'm curious, uh, Badi, is that similar in Colombia? Do people uh, party a lot in college? Yeah. Um, yes, I think so. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're going for yes. yes he, he, for instance, here, uh, Easter week, we call it ho Holy Party. <laughs> the Holy Party? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Great. And uh, Blanca, how about in, in, you're in Mexico, right? Right. Mm, yes. People uh, used to go to parties all weekend. All weekend. Okay. That's very common. Maria, how about in Sweden? Mm, yeah. Par partying is common. Yeah. For okay. college students. It's a verb, right? Partying. <laughs> partying. Yep. Partying. partying. Yeah. Tan, how about in Vietnam? 
Yes, but not me. <laughs> of course not you. You're at adver you're at verbling classes. <laughs> yes. Okay, good. Okay, great. So we just have so it sounds like you guys are familiar, so that you already bring some awareness and knowledge of this topic. So maybe the that will help you understand the article because you already have your own information about college and partying. All right, so I'm just going to get into it. A fair amount of Schadenfreude. So that's a German word actually, and it means pleasure derived from the misfortunes of others so if you are happy <laughs> that when somebody else is having a bad time that's the, that what that's what that word means it's not an english word so a fair amount of schadenfreude greeted the release last week of a study showing that the kids of parents who pay for college return their families largesse by achieving lower grades the study conducted by University of California at Merced, Professor Laura Hamilton, and published in the American Sociological Review, offered those of us who worked our way through college or took out burdensome student loans a rare opportunity to gloat. All right, let's see. Batuhan? Yes? Can you read that um, paragraph? Okay. So, uh, a fair amount of schadenfreude means pleasure derived from the misfortunes of others. Greeted the release last week of a study showing that the kids of parents who pay for college return their families largesses, 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 uh, largesse mm -hmm. by achieving lower grades. <laughs> the study conducted by University of California at Merced Professor Laura Hamilton and published in the American Sociological Review, offered those of us who worked our way, way through college or took out burdensome student loans a rare opportunity to gloat. Okay, so just a couple of things here. This is kind of a very long way <laughs> to say a lot of words in that uh, sentence there. But basically, they had um, a release of a study, and what it showed is that um, the kids whose parents paid for them to go to college actually got lower grades. So the, the word largesse here means, if you have largesse, it means you have a lot of money. It mm -hmm. can also mean you have like a lot of weight if you're a very big person, but largesse in this context means that their parents um, paid for their college and it's because they have a lot of money. They have financial largesse. But, like a donation? Excuse me, say it again. Uh, like a donation or something? Um, that's not what largesse means, but uh, <clears throat> largesse means, so we could say it a different way. So um, let's see, the last week, uh, the release last week of a study showing that the kids of parents who pay for college return their family's wealth, let's say. So largesse, okay. it could also mean their wealth, mm -hmm. their, okay. their money, by achieving lower grades. So oh. in the United States, um, I don't know if this is the same in other countries because I heard that in some countries edu university education is free or it's low cost. But in the United States, for example, depending on what type of college you go to, it can be very, very expensive. It can be even $50,000 per year um, or more. And um, some students cannot afford that, so they have to uh, borrow money or work. But um, other people who are very wealthy, for example, if your parents are doctors or lawyers or they, they, make, uh, they have businesses where they make a lot of money, then they just pay. Like, for example, I have a friend who is attending the university called MIT, and her father is an eye doctor, and he has many businesses, and he does eye surgeries, and he pays for her tuition and living expenses. Yes. Uh, Maria, yes, just the tuition alone can be very expensive. So fifty thousand in tuition only, mm -hmm. and then they have like yeah living costs. On yeah, top I don't, I don't know exactly, but yeah, I mean easily it could be twenty five thousand dollars in tuition, mm. for example. Mm. Yeah, 
Yeah, and that's for one year only. So, so some people, but the basic study shows that those students did not do better just because they didn't have the stress of, you know, you would think that maybe these students would do better because they could study more, they don't have to work, they don't have to take out a loan, but they didn't. They uh, did worse. And so that's what this word gloat means here, Maria. You asked about it. Um, so it says, offered those of us who worked our way through college or took out burdensome student loans a rare opportunity to gloat. So to gloat means kind of when you say, ha ha, I told you so. Like you're happy because another person, um, you were right and they were wrong. So it's kind of like you get to gloat. You get to think you're like better than them. So that's she's saying that the people who are gloating are the people who took out the loans because they said, "Ha, we we had to work hard, but we got better grades than you did." So. But is that is that the nice thing to do to no. gloat? <laughs> no, <laughs> it's not usually a very polite thing to do. Uh -huh. But it's uh, so that's kind of she's saying it a little bit of a sarcastic kind of tone. Is it like having the last laugh? Yes, exactly. Like yeah, you have the last laugh, exactly. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. That's a good way to say it. Okay, and this is an it's this is another way to say it. self congratulation. So yourself you're congratulating yourself, thinking you're really hot stuff. Like, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. All right, but our self congratulation is mistaken, or at least beside the point. So it's not really the point. Um, Hamilton's work and that of other researchers demonstrates that we should all be concerned about the state of higher education in the US today and that college students enjoying a four-year paid vacation courtesy of their parents are merely a symptom of a larger problem. Okay, Blanca, will you read that? Yes. Mm. Mm, but our self-congratulation is mistaken, or at least beside the point. Hamilton's work and that of other researchers demonstrates that we should all be concerned about the state of higher education in the U.S today and that college students enjoying a four-year paid vacation courtesy of their parents and are merely a symptom or a larger problem. Mm -hmm. So that paragraph she's saying it's not really the big the big idea. The big idea is that everybody's having um, trouble with education these days and even though some people get this four-year paid vacation um, from their parents, so courtesy of means given to them by their parents. Um, then uh, we all have that's just a symptom of a larger problem. So even even the kids who don't even have to work can't do very well in school. So that's a problem. Okay, I think somebody in the verbal chat, um, or you're here now, Ergin. You need the link. There's the link, and that you can open up the document and then uh, follow along because you'll be reading next. After I read this paragraph, you'll be reading it after I read it. So that problem is this. So she's going to tell us what the problem is. Across the board, American colleges and universities are not doing a very good job of preparing their students for the workplace or their post-graduation lives. This was made clear by the work of two sociologists, Richard Aram and Josipa Roxa. Okay, Ergen, did you find it? Your microphone might be muted because I don't hear you if you are talking. Ergen, are you there? Okay, Farhad, you want to read? Again, I think your microphone might be off if you're there and you're hearing me, but I'm not hearing you. So you have to just click on your microphone so it's not red anymore. Okay. okay uh, the dead problem is this across the board. American colleges and universities are not doing a well, uh, a very good job of preparing their students for the workplace or their post-graduation lives. This will be made clear by the work of two sociologists, Richard Aram and Josepha Rooks. Okay, so what are the two problems, what, what is the main problem that this uh, study is showing? 
Who can tell me in their own words what this paragraph just said? What are the problems? Colleges and universities mm -hmm. are not good uh, to prepare the students uh, for the post-graduation lives. Yeah, right. So why do people usually go to college? To uh, learn the skill for the job. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. for real life, actually. For real life, yeah. So typically, even, even though it might be fun to go to college and it might be fun to meet new people and have parties and um, play sports or something like that, kind of the real purpose of college has been to get more knowledge and more skills so that once you leave college, you can figure out how to make money in the real world, in a job, or by making your own business or, or something like that, right? And yeah. what they're saying is that is not what's happening. They are not doing a very good job of preparing the students for the workplace or for their lives after they leave school. Okay? Um, all right, let's keep reading. In 2011, they released a landmark study titled Academically Adrift which documented the lack of intellectual growth experienced by many people enrolled in college. The authors examined the results of tests taken at the beginning, middle, and end of students' undergraduate careers and concluded that 45% of students did not demonstrate any significant improvement in learning during their first two years of college while 36% failed to demonstrate improved learning across all four years. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Okay, uh, Julia, want to read? Me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, in 2011, they released a landmark study titled Academically Adrift, which documented the lack of intellectual growth experienced by many people enrolled in college. The authors exa examined the results of tests taken at the beginning, middle, and of students' undergraduate careers have concluded that 45% of students did not demonstrate any significant improvement in learning during the first two years of college, while 36% failed to demonstrate improved learning across all four years. Right. So what does it mean, lack of intellectual growth? Who can tell me what that means? Um, I think that means... Um, to get the deficiency of uh, together, um, intellectual mean that uh, together... Uh, mean, uh, Growth uh, that is uh, done by a lot of people. Not exactly. Julia, did you want to say means... what you thought it meant? Let, let's let Julia tell us. I think that means um, the intellectual level of the students stays the same mm -hmm. instead of growing um, by um, attending the classes and, um, yes. and following the programs. Right. Right, and Tan uh, wrote in the chat, it means that they're not learning <laughs> much. So, yeah, if you have a lack of intellectual growth, so usually intellectual is, uh, means things that you learn, with, um, that you use your mind for, about thinking. Uh, it also is more academic, perhaps. Uh, comes intellectual, oftentimes, uh, intellectual growth often comes from reading books and things like that. It's, it's different than, let's say, um, manual uh, growth, which might be, for example, or athletic skill. So your intellect is your mind, the things that you learn about using your mind. So what's happening in colleges, they're not learning. <laughs> they're spending all of these years, and there's no real significant improvement um, over two years and over four years. Right, so Ismael, that, that's right. So they come in, they know certain things, but they're not growing. They're not learning new things. So they come in already knowing some things, of course, 
but not uh, learning new things. Okay, that's what they're basically demonstrated by their uh, study there. And this word landmark that just means it's very important. So if anything is called landmark study, maybe it was the first study of its kind, or it made a very big impact. It was very important, and maybe it um, brought up something new that researchers didn't know about. So that's why they use the word landmark. Okay, next paragraph. In particular, Aram and Ruxa found college students were not developing the critical thinking, analytic reasoning, and other higher level skills that are necessary to thrive in today's knowledge based economy and to lead our nation in a time of complex challenges and dynamic change. All right, there's a lot of words in there. Ishmael, you want to read that? Yes. In particular, Ormand Roska found college students were not developing the critical thinking, analytic reasoning, and other higher level skills that are necessary to thrive in today's knowledge-based economy and to lead our nation in a time of complex challenge and dynamic change. Yes. Okay, there's a lot of things in here. So some people believe that there are certain skills that people need today to survive and to thrive. What What does thrive mean? Can, can somebody give me another word for thrive? Succeed. Succeed. Good. That's, that's what I was looking for. To succeed, to do well. So um, they're not the skills maybe that you needed 100 years ago or 200 years ago, but they're skills for today's economy. And what is he telling, or what is this uh, author telling us, what is our economy based on today? Knowledge. Yeah. Yeah, knowledge. Yeah, it's based on knowledge. So it's not necessarily based on how well you hunt or fish or how well you make baskets or how well you create. Uh, uh, you know, clean your house or something like that. The economy. You organize a party. Yeah, how well you organize party. Although you can make a job of that. <laughs> um, it's really based on your knowledge. So a lot of um, jobs these days, you have to know a lot of things. For example, last night in our reading class, we were talking about um, windmills and wind turbines, and they were saying that um, in the United States, that it's a growing industry. And they need technicians to work on uh, windmills. And that if you learn how to do that, then when you start, <coughs> your starting salary can be $70,000 per year. <coughs> so that's um, a really good salary for somebody. But you have to have information. You have to have knowledge. You have to have the skills to fix those windmills. That's what you need to learn. So those are called critical thinking skills, analytic reasoning, and these are called higher level skills. It's not just reading, not just writing, not just basic math, but it's um, these higher level thinking thing, skills. Okay, did anybody have a question about that paragraph? Any vocabulary words you didn't understand? If you don't understand something, just tell me. I will explain it. Yes. Dynamic check. Okay. Go ahead. Students are uh, raising the levels in making parties. They're raising the level in what? Making parties. Making parties, yeah. <laughs> They're getting really good at partying. <laughs> yes. Okay, the word dynamic. Dynamic change really means um, things are happening all the time. Things are changing. It's very dynamic. Um, the opposite of dynamic would be like stale or slow or boring, something like that. So dynamic is is how um, a lot of people describe our uh, current modern economy, modern lifestyle. Things happen very quickly. Um, new technologies are coming out every day. Websites are being created, and things are just um, changing all the time. And it's very quick and exciting. It's not slow, it's not boring, it's not um, old, it's all new. Okay? Yes, and Tan, yeah. may, maybe you should change your major. If you want to climb up on a wind mills 100 feet in the, in the air, <laughs> <laughs> off the ground. 
Yeah. And did somebody else have another question or something else? No? Okay. No. Aram and Ruxa placed placed the blame. So they're they're blaming somebody, something. So they're placing the blame for students' lack of learning on a watered down college curriculum and lacks undergraduate work ethics. Although going to college is supposed to be a full-time job, the authors reported that students spent on average only 12 to 14 hours a week studying and that many were skating through their semesters without doing a significant amount of reading and writing. Okay, those slackers. All right, Maria. Uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, Arum and Roxa placed the blame for students' lack of learning on a watered-down college curriculum and lacks undergraduate work ethic. Mm -hmm. Also, going to college is supposed to be a full-time job. Mm. The authors reported that students spent, on average, only 12 to 14 hours a week studying yeah. <laughs> and that many were skating through their semesters without doing a significant amount of reading and writing. Wow. Yes. So they are blaming uh, this uh, problem um, on kind of two things. One has to do with the college. So the college itself is providing what they call watered down curriculum. So the curriculum is the the, le the study, the lessons, the what the, the what a student is supposed to be learning in the class, and they're saying that it's watered down. And I wrote over here in the verbling chat: if something is watered down, it means it's not very hard, it's not difficult, it's not very rigorous, it's very simple, easy. Maybe you only have to read three books instead of six books. Maybe you only have to write one or two papers instead of a paper every week. Something like that. They don't, they don't expect very much from their students. And then the other part is uh, the student's problem, which is their lax. So that means kind of like uh, relaxed or... Uh, yeah, they're not, they're not trying very hard. They don't have a very good work ethic. Yes, Maria, it's like diluted. Yes, watered okay. down is diluted. Thank you. If you mm -hmm. have a drink, like say you pour yourself a cup of coffee and it's very dark and it's very bitter and it's too strong, you can water it down by adding some water or milk. And mm -hmm. that's the same thing you're doing with the curriculum. They're making it um, less, we say rigorous, ri less difficult. Vigorous. No, Vig rigorous. Mm -hmm. with, an, with an R. Yeah. Rig rigorous, okay. Yes, rigorous. Rigorous would mean tough. It would be very difficult. And if you okay. got through it, you would be really, uh, you would have a lot of skills and knowledge afterwards. But if it's watered down, it's just kind of boring and not too hard, very okay. easy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then also a lot of the students nowadays, they don't have much of a work ethic. So they're not really into working too hard. <laughs> they like easy. And so they're saying that even though it's supposed to be a full-time job, so presumably when you go to college, you're supposed to be taking a lot of classes and then spending your time studying, reading, writing papers, doing labs, things like that. Uh, students are spending very little time doing that. And here's a phrase here. Um, they are skating through their semesters. What does that mean? Anybody want to make a guess if you don't know? Skating on ice. Yeah. Skating, so they kind of another don't take it. Another word would be coasting. Mm -hmm. Coasting. Mm -hmm. Or another word would be uh, taking it easy. So they're just kind of getting by. It's very easy. Chill out. Yeah, they're chilling out, yes. <laughs> so they're skating through. They're not having a hard time. It's pretty easy. Okay? All right, let's see here. Students who take more challenging classes and spend more time studying do learn more. But the priorities of many undergrads are with extracurricular clubs and activities, fraternities and sororities, practicing and playing sports, and partying and socializing. And let's not forget sleeping. <laughs> so, Tan, will you read that? Oh, no. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. 
Students who take more challenging classes and spend more time studying do, do learn more. But the priorities of many undergrads are with extracurricular clubs and activities, uh, fraternities and sororities, practicing and playing sports, and partying and socializing, and let's not forget sleeping. Okay. So what is a priority? It says here, but the priorities of many undergrads. What is a priority? Anybody know? Yes. Priority. Mm -hmm. Maria, go ahead. Priority is the things that you put, put in the first room yes. or first place. Yes. So um, it's what is important to you. So for mm. example, if you want to be tan, for example, if you want to be a professional singer, I don't know that you want to be a professional singer, but <laughs> if you want to uh, be a good singer, then you probably need to sing. You need to practice, you need to learn some songs, um, you don't need to play video games too much, right? Same thing with learning English, as you guys know. Coming to Verbling classes, if that's a priority for you, that means it's important. If something is important for you, you make it a priority. Okay? So, for example, <coughs> if uh, being in shape, being fit is a priority for you, then you might want to go running or you might like to play some sports, uh, something like that. And so they're saying that usually um, when you go to college, your priority should be to study and to learn. But these days, other things seem to be more important for people than studying. So who can tell me what some of those things are that uh, kids or young people are thinking is more important than learning and studying? It says right there. Just tell me back what it says. Partying and okay. socializing. Yes, partying is one. But yeah, that is not sport. the same thing. I mean, partying is not the same as social. No, partying would be, include drinking probably and going out. Socializing just means like getting together with your friends and going for a walk or you know meeting in your dorm room and you know just chatting something like that. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Drinking what else? Drinking on the internet. Yeah, yeah. Playing uh, World of Warcraft maybe <laughs> something <laughs> like that. Online games. Facebook, uh, sports, uh, clubs. Some people are into clubs, like chess club, maybe, or something like that. And also, um, do you guys know what fraternities and sororities are? Yeah, because I watched the Facebook movie. No, oh, <laughs> I never saw that. <laughs> yes. So a fraternity is a house. Yeah, they have Greek names. <laughs> Um, there are houses where people live. So uh, when you go to college here, a lot of times in the United States, people leave their home and they leave their town where they grew up and they go to colleges farther away. And so because they're going farther away, a lot of time they live either in dorms on the campus or they try to live in houses with other students. And some of these are called fraternities. Those are only for boys. And then there's sororities, those are for girls. And usually these are for people who have mon more money, and it's kind of like um, known for lots and lots of partying, and also for networking. So meeting people that maybe later in your life you will work with, or that kind of stuff. So that's popular in the United States. I don't know, is it popular in Sweden to have sororities? or? Uh, no, it's not like divided. Yeah. In between men and women like that. Yeah. So Farhad? Yeah, yeah, I just uh, wanted to say that I didn't understand the second word sorority. Sororities is a house for girls. Okay, so okay. Yeah, house for women. They're not girls anymore. So it's the house where uh, women college students live. Okay. But you, you can't just get into a sorority. There's a whole um, there's a whole process where you have to apply, and then they have to put you through these kind of ordeals, and they have to figure out if you're right. It's kind of like a, a an elite 
club kind of thing for just certain people. Yeah. But Lisa, is that extracurricular clubs? Is that something you put on your curriculum? Cur extracurricular? Extracurricular. Is that something you put on your resume or something like that? Um, maybe. I mean, an extracurricular club is anything that's not related to your classes, but it could be something like the uh, chess club, and it could be like the international club okay. or the Spanish club. You might want to mm -hmm. put it on your resume if it was something um, that was important to the job that you were trying to get, you know, mm -hmm. okay. Lin linguistics club, something like that. Yeah, <laughs> and sports. So in a lot of in a lot of uh, universities, sports is even more important than learning. Some people believe because <laughs> it's a big money maker. Okay, the results are clear, wrote Aram and Roxa. Educational practices associated with academic rigor improved student performance, while collegiate experiences associated with social <coughs> engagement did not. If students' priorities are off, perhaps they're taking cues from the top. Okay, uh, Yair. <laughs> Here I go. All right. The results are clear. Growth, Aaron, and Roster. Educational practices associated with academic rigor improve student performance, while collegiate experiences associated with social engagement do not. If students' priorities are off, perhaps they are taking they are taking cues from the top. Mm -hmm. So they're basically saying when you have di more difficult classes, you do learn more, you do better. But um, you do better than just hanging out with your friends or, you know, checking your Facebook page or going to uh, soccer games, football games, things like that. But if the students' priorities are off, so that means like they aren't on uh, academics, perhaps they're taking cues. So if you take your cue, from someone from the top it means you're learning from them so they're learning from the top which um, is about the administration the people who are running the uh, college yes Richard, I, I could understand the paragraph okay uh, I don't know if it, it is possible to yeah to go back okay sure. if students priorities are off yes so if students uh, do not have the right priorities. So the right priorities, according to them, for learning would be to take rigorous classes, to study more, to read more, and to go to class. Um, but if they're off, perhaps it's because of what's happening at the top. They're taking their cues. They're learning from what is happening at the top. And so at the university level, the top refers to like the president of the college or the university, uh, the teachers, the coaches, the people that are, um, it's their job to run the school. So, and that's what she's going to talk about next. So we'll, you'll, it'll make more sense when we read the next paragraph here. Another study released last week, this one by the Delta Coast Project, Delta Cost Project, a branch of the American Institutes for Research, found that universities and colleges that belong to Division One, the top tier of college sports, spend about three to six times as much on athletics <clears throat> per athlete as they spend on academics per student. Okay, so that gives us a clue of what's important to the people at the top. Okay, uh, Batuhan? Yeah, okay. Another study released last week, this one by the Delta Cost Project, a branch of the American Institutes for Research found that universities <coughs> and colleges that belong to Division I, the top tier of college sports, spend about three to six times as much on athletics for athletes uh, as they spend on academics per student. Yes. So where are they spending their money, these colleges? I'm sorry? Where, what are they spending more money on, these colleges? What do they spend a lot of money on? Well, sports. Yes, right. Yeah. Yes. So in the United States, there's different levels of um, 
uh, competition in sports. So the Division One is the number one division. So those are the the schools that have the highest level um, soccer, baseball, football, basketball teams. Okay, so those uh, colleges in particular spend way more money on promoting sports than they do on promoting uh, academic learning. That's according to that study. In the Please. South, yes, you have a question? Yeah, I have a question. What's mean of tier of college sports? Okay, the top tier means the highest level. Highest so the, level. Yeah, a tier equals level. So Thank it's just you. another word for level. Yep. Isn't that like a layer? Uh huh, like a layer, yep. Yeah. You can have layers or levels or like yep. Okay. In the Southeastern Conference, which produced the last seven NCAA national champions in football, the ratio is more like twelve times as much spending on athletes as on students. Not only does athletic spending per athlete far exceed academic spending per student, it is also growing about twice as fast, the report noted, with much of the spending going to multi-million dollar coaching contracts, more athletic staff, and better facilities. Okay, Blanca? In the Southern Conference, which produced the last seven NCAA national champions, the ratio is more like 12 times as much spending on athletes as on students. Not only does athletic spending per athlete far exceed academic spending per student, it is also growing about twice as fast. The report noted which much with much of the spending going to multi-million dollar coaching contracts, more athletic staff, and better facilities. Mm -hmm. So, they're spending even more money, <laughs> 12 times as much. And they're buying things like uh, better footballs and fields and building big uh, stadiums, things like that for the athletes. That's where all this money is going instead of helping students uh, learn more. Hamilton, the author of the study on parents who pay for college, will argue in a forthcoming book that college administrations are overly concerned with the social and athletic activities of their students. Okay, Ergen? Yeah, I read it. Okay, go ahead. Ham Hamilton, the author of the study on parents who pay for college, will argue in a forthcoming book that College administration are overly concerned with the social and athletic activists or their students. Yeah. So he's arguing in his next book that they are spending too much money on sports and social activities. So maybe um, <laughs> it's kind of like, well, we'll have a discussion in a minute. Let's get through the article before I start asking questions. In Paying for the Party, a book she co-authored with sociologist Elizabeth Armstrong that will be published this spring, Hamilton, Hamilton describes what she calls the party pathway, which eases many students through college, helped along by a powerful Greek system, that's the fraternities and the sororities, um, residence halls that funnel students into the party scene and a host of easier majors. Okay. Farhad? Farhad? <coughs> yeah, yeah. In Fame for the Party, a book she co-authorized with the sociologist Elizabeth Armstrong that will be published this spring. Hamilton describes what she calls the party pathway, which eases many students through college, help along by a powerful Greek system. Residents, uh, halls, dead funnel students into the party scene and host up easier uh, measures. Right. Measures. Yes. So the Greek system that they're referring to, that's what I was talking about, those uh, fraternities and sororities. Those are the houses uh, for the men and then the houses for women. That's the Greek system. Um, so they're just making it really easy for them. So they're giving them easy majors 
rather than very difficult ones that might be um, better um, better for them to get jobs in the economy. So a lot of times people are going through easy majors, but then they can't even get a job afterwards. So it wasn't really um, a good idea <laughs> to do that. By sanctioning this version of college light, so <laughs> it's college light, like not very hard, uh, kind of like a light soda or something. Hamilton and Armstrong write, universities are catering to the social and educational needs of affluent full freight students at the expense of others who won't enjoy the financial backing or social connections of richer students once they graduate. Okay, uh, Julia? By sanctioning this version of College Light, Hamilton and Armstrong write, University are catering the, to the social uh, and educational needs of, two, of affluent. Uh, sorry. Um, I'm lost, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, full fright uh, students at uh, the expense of others who won't enjoy financial backing or social connection of richer students on the gra once they graduate. Great. So they're saying that basically they're catering to, so they're making the rich uh, students happy and making it easy for them. But this isn't very good for the people who um, that have been taking loans out and working hard because those people, the people who take loans out and work hard through college, they're not going to be rich when they get out <laughs> and they're not going to have the social connections that those wealthier students have. So they really do need to have a better education and more skills. Uh, because the rich students presumably will still be rich, their parents will still be helping them out probably, and they also have uh, these uh, connections once they graduate. What does it mean to catering? Catering is to serve? Some to serve, yeah, to, serve. to try to please somebody. Mm -hmm. You're catering to them, you're trying to, to make sure that they are getting what they want. So is it a big difference? I mean, is it like this on every university? No. Or, or college, or is it different on different yes. colleges? Yes. I, I would say that um, they're talking probably about some of the bigger colleges, mm -hmm. and that's a problem. Uh, but I'm sure it happens in some of the... We have lots of different types of universities and colleges here, some smaller ones, some public ones, some private ones. Uh, it really depends um, what state you're in and the whole uh, community that, that that university is in and the history of it. But certainly what they're talking about is some of the major ones, even the ones that are more popular, like probably they're even talking about ones like uh, Stanford, Harvard, you know, places yeah, like yeah. that. Is yeah, you in the United States. Yeah, yes, things like that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Alisa. So, yes. Can I ask a question again? Yeah. Yes. Uh, could you pro pronounce it that sanctioning? Mm -hmm. Am I right? Yes. Sanctioning. Uh, and what and what does it mean? By sanctioning. So by ba okay. So they say by sanctioning this version of college light. So if you sanction something, that means you say it's okay. You implement it, and you're okay with it. So. Mm -hmm. They're saying that but the universities are sanctioning this version. They're not having problems with it. They're saying it's okay. We like it. Uh, we want to spend money on sports, and it's okay if uh, kids want to party, that kind of thing. So when you okay. san sanction something, you say that you give it your approval, basically. You approve of it. Thank you. It's okay. Like yep. you allow and something. Yes, it's allowing. Okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. Sometimes uh, yeah, you get... Teacher. Yes? But what about uh, affluent? Uh, what Aff does it mean? Rich. Rich, okay. Affluent means rich. Yep. Okay. Lots of money. Okay. okay. These students okay. need to build skills and knowledge during college if they are to use their degrees as a stepping stone to middle class mobility. But more privileged students must not waste this opportunity either. As recent graduates can attest, so as they can say, um, the job market isn't kind to candidates who can't demonstrate genuine competence along with a well-honed willingness to work hard. 
Okay, where were we? Far Farhad? Did you read? Yeah, yeah. Okay, Julia? Me again? Yes. Okay. Uh, so, these students need to build skills and knowledge during college if they are to, uh, if they are to use their degree as a stepping stone to middle class mobility. But more privileged students must not waste this opportunity either. As the recent, recent graduates can attest, the job market is unkind to candidates who can demonstrate genuine competence along with a well, um, well I'm sorry, honed. I don't know that word, well, well honed willingness to work hard. Yes, exactly. So. Okay. So we're going to finish up here because we have only one minute. Okay, so nor is the global economy forgiving of an American workforce with increasingly weak literacy, math, and science abilities. College graduates will still fare better than those with only a high school education, of course. Okay, Ismail? Nor is the global economy forgiving of an American workforce with increasingly weak literacy, math, and science abilities. College graduates will still fare better than those with only a high school education, of course. Yep. With only a high school education. Somebody has a verbally oh, window open. Okay, but a university degree unaccompanied by a gain in knowledge or skills is an empty achievement indeed. For students, parentally funded or not, who have been coasting through college, and for American universities that have been demanding less work, offering more goodies, and charging higher tuition, the party may soon be over. Okay, Maria, you want to read that last one? Yes, please. Uh, but the university degree unaccompan uh, unaccompanied by gaining knowledge or skills is an empty achievement indeed. For, st for students, parentally funded or not, uh, who have been coasting through college and for those American students, universities that yeah. have been demanding less work, offering more goodies and charging higher tuitions, the party may yeah. soon be over. Right. So maybe they will not be able to continue doing this any longer. And, and the reason why is because the American workforce needs to have these skills and if they don't then other people in other countries will be able to take those jobs and Americans won't be able to even work. So that's what a lot of people are saying nowadays about uh, what needs to happen in the university system. So, Does anybody have any comments or things that they it's want to say? It's a bit depressing, this, this <laughs> study, <laughs> isn't it? Yes. Like, uh, well, it's kind of, you could say it's a wake-up call. Okay. That's what you say, a wake-up call. So, you know, going to college, it used to be in the in the past, oh, you go to college, you automatically get a good job, but that's mm -hmm. not, not in the true past. anymore. Okay. Yeah, Why? There's too, there's too many people who can do things. You know, a lot of people can do uh, things that uh, somebody from college or somebody who went to college can do. So for today, you need to kind of know what skills you need, and then you need to actually have good skills, not just a little bit. You know, you know you're pretty good, but you know. There's a lot more people in the world today, too, so you have to have... So better. maybe the, the colleges have, have to change. Yes, that's, uh, that's, why they, that's what it means when they say the party's over. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, the party's over means they can't keep doing what they have been doing. They have to make a change. Mm -hmm. yeah. But this word schadenfreude in the beginning, is that a word you use in, no. in colloquial speech or...? No. <laughs> Just, but, but an American knows what it means? Or? No. No. Okay. No. But writers, you know, they, they use words sometimes like that. Understand. Yeah, but there's no English word for that. No. There's no okay. <laughs> no. Well, it's when you're happy at the expense of others, so you're kind of, uh, you could say you're stuck up or you're like... Uh, feeling mm -hmm. superior to somebody, something like that. <laughs> You're happy because they are getting a, a bad grade or a bad report or something and you're like, ha, 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 you know. That's what it means. Thank you, yes, sir. Uh, interesting topic. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome, Ishmael. I'll see you later. Yair, did you have yes, a question? Sir. 
Yes. I want to ask something, Lisa. Okay, uh, Ishmael. We read an essay, and uh, the thing in this essay is valid through all university in the U.S. No. 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 I wouldn't say that this um, is relevant to every single university, but a lot of them. A lot of co it's very well known that uh, going to college nowadays does not necessarily mean you're going to get the skills that you need to get a good job. It does, a lot of people know that college can be a time where people just party and they try to, they try to do as little as possible. Um, but of course it depends on the person and the college. It, um, different colleges might have a different uh, curriculum, more rigorous, um, more demanding and they might give people more opportunities to uh, do academic things, not just sports. Not every university in the United States has big sport programs. Just, I mean, a lot of them do, but not, not all of them. So. There's a lot How of universities percent? in the United States. <laughs> yeah. How many percent, Lisa? Because there are lots of students who are dreaming of uh, studying in the U.S. Yes. Yes. In my country, lots yes. of... So I think if you're thinking about studying in the United States, the best thing to do is to really do research about where and to know, if you know ahead of time what you want to study, if you want to study sciences or electrical engineering or something like that, then you want to pick a, a university or a college that has a good program for that particular um, area of study. You want it, You need to do research. You can't just go to any old college or university just because it's in the United States. You really want to know which college um, has the good programs that where you're going to learn a lot, so you can use use it. You know, use your degree. Not everybody that goes to the United States to study has good English skills. Right. There's always um, also when you come to the United States. If you don't have good enough English skills for writing papers and reading at the academic level, then there's always classes you can take maybe for three months or six months that will help you get up to that level. It's more intense, intensive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Lisa. All right, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Very interesting topics. Yeah. All your topics are very <laughs> nice. Well, I think so. They have to be interesting to me to read them. <laughs> <laughs> have you read this book, Sorry to Hold no. You? Well, it hasn't come out yet. It's not lean out. Lean in. Lean in. Have you read this oh, book? Oh, lean in. No, I was going to do that article, though, today, but it was too long for the class. But, okay, um, but you I, haven't read the book no. yet? Did you? Me neither. No, yeah. no, no, but it's cheap on Amazon, so oh. I will probably buy it. Yeah, I just heard about it. So, um, yeah, give mm -hmm. me a report. Uh, she uh, talks about, she's the C Chief Operating Officer of Facebook who wrote it. Yes. Yeah. But okay. she has been working at the World Bank, I think, oh. also. She has a lot of experience from the top, top tier. <laughs> yes. I think one of her main things is that, uh, yeah, still the women versus men kind of perceptions that we have of what women do and what men can do, something like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's a website about it, too. I haven't gone to that website yet, but there's a Lean In website. Okay. Yeah. Okay, guys, okay. I'm going to go correct some, some of your stuff. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you so Back. much. All right. Yeah. See you guys later. Bye. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye, Tan.